Okay, so the, the observer. So the observer is really good to do after feel the feelings or to do, um, or to do, and also can be done in connection, in tandem with doing the feel the feelings and the observer at the same time. Uh, which maybe I'll talk with about this video. So if you've done, you can start off with a few minutes of feel the feelings and then you can go straight into the observer and then that will start to help you to mix the two processes together. So in the observer, you, one realizes that anything that is experienced, that is an object, has to be observed. So, and then, and that you can be the observer of that, which is limited. So there is an observer of everything that has limitation. So if I was to hold up a mug or a hand before you, that which is observing the mug or the hand cannot be the mug and the hand. The observer observes the shape and is bigger than the shape. So like just if I was holding a cup up and you were observing it, the, you then can re recognize a level of consciousness where there is observing of the shape or the mug and one is the detached observer of that. So the next thing is thoughts. So when thoughts pass by, thoughts are like little objects that pass by, little clouds that float across the sky. That which observes thoughts pass or clouds pass is the observer of thoughts. So then as you recognize, then you can start to recognize that even if thoughts are passing or there's no thoughts or there's few thoughts passing, the observer of thoughts is that is a is a higher state of consciousness, is a greater sense of limitlessness, the observer which observes thoughts. And as you're observing thoughts and you're in the position of the observer of thoughts and detached from them, then you feel a more limitless experience of observation. And as you recognize that all thoughts are meaningless, then the observer gets deeper and even the thoughts may start to disappear or even one may lose interest in the thoughts and there's a deeper experiencing of the observer or the witnesser uh, that is free of identification with thoughts. Next thing is images. If there's any pictures or images going in the consciousness, recognize that there is that which observes pictures and images in consciousness and that even if a picture comes from childhood and then passes by, that which observes images coming and going is imageless. So there's a recognition of a witnessing in consciousness which is imageless, even if images arise and pass before it. So you're now experiencing that which is thoughtless, and you're now experiencing that which is imageless. Next is the body. If there's any experience of the shape or the body, then there is that which is observing. So if you have a sense of your body, you might be aware, oh yeah, I can feel where my legs are and my things. So that's a shape. But what's observing the shape of the body? That which is observing the shape and the, and, the, and the length and the breadth and the physicality of the body, that is be in that witnessing or observing of the body. And then one will recognize that there is an observing of the body which is bodiless, which is limitless beyond the body. And so you now experience something which is beyond an observer or a witnesser beyond thought, beyond the body, beyond images, if there's any feelings or energies or vibrations that are being experienced, if there's any feelings anywhere, any tensions or any aches or pains, well those pains are like objects and there is that which witnesses or observes those feelings or aches or pains. And that which observes these aches, pains is painless. It's bodiless, it's feelingless. Even if a feeling of fear suddenly arises in consciousness, that which is observing the feeling arising is observing the feeling and is not the feeling. So then you get to a witnessing of consciousness which is limitless, 
which is expansive, which is infinite. And thoughts may pass before it, the body may pass before it, feelings may pass before it, and images may pass before it, but it is not an image. It is not a thought. It is not the body. It is not a feeling. Also, if there's any sense of time, is there something in the consciousness counting seconds or trying to track time or identify with time? Well, there is that which observes and witnesses any sense of time. There is a witnesser and observer which has no interest in time, which does not identify with time, and which, in which time is meaningless. As you go into this deeper state of witnessing and observing, you'll recognize that this place is timeless. It's locationless. If there's any sense of location, what is observing any sense of location? And that which witnesses location, does any location exist in that which witnesses? Then you realize you'll be that in which there is no location, there is no time, there is no thought, there is no feeling, there is no image. And if you're in this place of witnessing, if there's any sense of limitation, any sense of contraction, any sense of constriction, then that is an object. And there is that which is observing or witnessing that constriction or that limitation, no matter how expansive it may be. And as you become the witness of that, you'll now become even more limitless and more eternal and more expansive than that which was before in limitation that was being identified with. So carry on this until you're observing everything within the world and within the experience of limits. And we'll just sit in this witnessing and this practice for about three or four minutes in silence.